how you can believe in one man who um, couldn't read, couldn't write. With regards to the man being unlearned, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in your book. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the other clip during the Q&A session in the lecture of Psych Ahmed Didad in Bradford. This man come and asked excitedly about the personality of the Prophet Muhammad that he was an illiterate man and how can the Muslims believe that he is a genuine messenger of God while he does not know how to read or write. This allegation have been directed to the Prophet Muhammad for a long time by missionaries, Christian scholar, and the other non-Muslim even the atheists, in order to dimming the light of Islam. They wanted to deceive the Muslims by reasoning, that if someone has been labeled as illiterate, then he is a failure and he does not qualify to be called a prophet, because everything that comes from the mouth of an illiterate man, cannot be trusted. This man, also wanted to compare the Prophet Muhammad and the prophets that mentioned in the Bible, including Jesus Christ. That they were not illiterate, unlike Prophet Muhammad. So from this angle, the Christians believe are more higher degree, above the Muslims believe. Because Jesus Christ and all of their prophets can read and write. That is the logic of him. Could you tell me how you can believe in one man, who um, couldn't read, couldn't write, did it? could get his followers uh, by bloodshed through war, uh, how he can believe that that man was a follower of God, let alone a prophet of God, uh, to, um, uh, and to accept all his teachings. This questioner, who call himself a teacher, also putting some allegation about Prophet Muhammad, that he was spreading Islam by bloodshed and war. And this is a shame, because as a teacher, how come he makes such a statement, while he never know the real personality of the Prophet Muhammad? So ladies and gentlemen, let's hear the great answer from our Shaykh Ahmed Didat. Now with regards to the man being unlearned, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in your book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. It says there, and the book is given to him that is not learned. The book, please, please. The book is given to him that is not learned, saying read. And he says, I am not learned. Now, if you look for in the religious history of man, in the Bible, you will never find an occasion where any prophet of God, when given the message of God, he says, I am not learned. The very fact that the man is unlearned is a proof that this book is the book of God. What about the kidnapping in Lebanon, which was done by Muslims? What about the Iraqi-Iran war, which is done by Muslims? What about all the other things? No, listen, you must understand the point I'm making. Yeah. I'm making the point that I'm not trying to denigrate Muhammad. I wouldn't do that in, in an audience like this. Brother, Muhammad, why, I, I will listen to you, but why not let me finish it? Let me finish. Look, you are the principal. Yes, 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 yes. You are the principal of a school, and you know. So look, you ask the question. Let me finish. We'll give you a chance again. See, you know you're a great man. You're a great man. Thomas Carlyle, you heard about him? One of the greatest thinkers of the past century. And you know whom he chose as his hero prophet? Muhammad. You know that, sir? Muhammad, his hero prophet. Not David, not Solomon, not Moses, not Jesus, but Muhammad as his hero prophet. Your man, Thomas Carlyle, and he defends Muhammad. He says about this accusation of yours, sir, the chose sword. He said, the sword, he said, the sword indeed. But where will you get your sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. It is one man against all men. That he take a sword and try to propagate with that will do little for him. He said, first, you must get your sword. Where do you get your sword? Where do you get your sword from? By force? One man against all men, the whole nation? Whatever he preached, it was going against the grain of the nation. They were not like politicians. Muhammad was not a politician. The politician was giving you what you want. Muhammad is going against the grain of the whole nation. A nation of drunkards. He's, they want to drink, he says no drink. They want to gamble, he says no gambling. They want endless, limitless number of wives, he says no, limit them. At every step, he went against the grain and he conquered them with what? With a sword. One man against the whole world with a sword. Does it make sense? Then the Muslims spread out. You know we ruled Spain for 800 years. If 800 years the Muslims ruled any type of force, even economic force, 
we wouldn't have been thrown out of Spain. 800 years. We ruled that country, and when we were kicked out, there was not one man left in that country to give the azan. Reason? Because they didn't use any type of force. We ruled India for a thousand years, the Muslims. And after a thousand years of Muslim rule, when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarters. Why? Because we didn't use any force. Indonesia, I want to know which Muslim army went there. 130 million Muslims. Malaysia, which Muslim army went there? The whole of East Africa, which Muslim army went there? The whole of West Africa, which Muslim army went there? Tell me, force. Today in Britain, people like you, sir, people who think, who are not prejudiced, they are accepting Islam. What sort? It is the sort of the intellect. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time in watching this video. A little information, only in Ezerol Hack channel, you will find the most interesting part, and information of every lecture of Sheikh Ahmed D. Dat. So keep supporting this channel by clicking that subscribe button. Like, and fill up your comment in the comment section below. See you on the next video.